Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the adventures of Nazim al -Ashabah. We are here in the Temple of RK. We're going to explore this temple a little bit. We're still getting slight performance hit, but not too bad this time. I think uh, it may be due to the weather effects outside, combined with there being so many windows. It has sometimes caused a little bit of stuttering, but actually this time it's uh, not so bad. Let's talk with this gentleman here. Hello. Well met, stranger. Any news? You might be interested to know that the Benevolence of Mara has just allied with our care. Interesting. And we'll pick up a quest later. First, let's uh, speak with this worshipper as well. Hello there. Well met, stranger. Any news? Don't spread this around, because Anset and the Order of the Cup are working together. Okay. I'm not sure what the Order of the Cup is. That could be a Knightly Templar Order. And by the way, last time when I had noticed the uh, Knights of Iron, those are the Knights Templar of the Resolution of Zen, worshippers of Zenathar, god of work and commerce. And uh, I had forgotten that there are Knights Templar factions in this game. They don't really have a significant presence. You can't really do anything with them, per se. There might be some mods that uh, give them a little more material to work with. I hope that's the case, but uh, anyway. Any member of RK deserves my assistance. Can you tell me any news? Mixers of Akatosh and the Knights of the Dragon were close allies until that incident at the palace. I wonder what incident that could have been. Lovely painting. And here again, I am noticing that slight performance hit, but not too bad. Excuse me. What kind of training do you offer? 200 gold? Well... Okay, interesting list of potential training skills. But maybe not this time. I'm in the order of RK. You're in RK. We're both in RK. <laughs> All right. Any news? I heard the Dakfron and the Order of the Cup have patched up their differences. All right. Fair enough. Interesting tablet here. You need to be a member of sufficient rank to access this. Okay. Interesting. Let's check the other room over here. My torch flickers and dies. Oh, I had completely forgotten I had a torch lit. Oh well. Excuse me. May I buy potions? My services are reserved for a special few. You are not yet among them. I am in the order of RK. You're in RK. We're both in RK. <laughs> yes, of course. Any news? The Thieves' Guild is not just a legend, it's real. I cannot tell you how I know, or they will kill me. Interesting. And you, sir, what services do you provide? Making potions. You are not of sufficient rank to use my services. Fine, fine. Bow. We of the Order of RK are always willing to help members of RK. After all, we are both part of RK. If you say so. Any news? The Order of the Hour got the short end of the stick in some deal. Now they're out to get Apothecaries of Mara. The Order of the Hour might be an official knightly order, or they might be Knights Templar from one of the temples, I don't recall. Anyway. Arke is the god of birth and death, by the way, for those who may not know. And the god of cycles of life in general. Let's go ahead and get a quest from this lady here, the one who uh, inducted us into this order. Oh no, she doesn't offer that. She just offers uh, the ability to make donations. Well met, stranger. Can you tell us any rumors? Lady Kulva has begun writing poetry about the valorous Redguard who rescued her. Well, that is lovely. And I might happen to know that Redguard. So I guess this is the only quest giver. Hmm, let me see what tasks we have available. 
Please have patience, wait here a moment, Nazim. So we have the haunted house, the heretic, the possessed child, the missing scholar, the insane priest, hunt for undead, the desecrated temple. Very interesting. Now, hunting for undead is a little bit tempting, as one with ties to the Ashaba tribe. Novice, I have a dangerous mission for you. I will tell you up front it involves slain a rather powerful undead creature. Are you still willing to undertake this task for the Order of RK? Well, if it's a very powerful undead, we should probably say no for now. Well, I certainly cannot blame you. I myself would not dare it. We need to get some better items and spells before we take anything too ambitious. So for now, perhaps we could attempt another rescue mission. Let's hear about the missing skull. Novice, one of our clerics, an elegantly dressed lady named Bethka, has disappeared while on an archaeological dig. Will you help us find her? Yes. That's good, good. Now then, Bethka went to ruins of Blotchden Palace, close to a fortnight ago, to conduct a dig. It's possible that all is well, but I'll give you 18 days to go there, find Bethka, and come back. RK, walk with you, novice. Farewell. Thank you. We will do our best. Why are you still watching me? Pardon me, madam. We of the Order of RK are always willing to help members of RK. After all, we are both part of RK. So, okay, she's a member of the temple as well, as one might expect for someone standing around here. Vlitka insulted Belladonna Hawksley in a missive. Now Menevia is out to get the Knights of the Hawk. Interesting, interesting. Now this location... Oh, hello there. Hi. Um, hello, my friend. Uh, have you heard any interesting rumors? Bethka was a fool to go unarmed into ruins of Blockston Palace. Well... In any case, this location is known as the Sacred Tree of RK. I don't know whether this strange plant here could be the Sacred Tree. If that even is a plant, I think it is. It's also possible one of these trees out here could be the Sacred Tree. Not entirely clear, but that's fine. Perhaps the Sacred Tree doesn't even exist anymore and the temple was built where it used to exist. Who knows? Let's go ahead and look at our logbook. The Lich of the Order of Archaea sent me to ruins of Washington Palace to rescue a cleric named Bethka who disappeared down there. I have 18 days. Okay. Well, we should go ahead and save first. So let's do that. days. Interesting place. So she was engaged in an archaeological dig here. Hopefully she is still very much alive and unharmed somewhere in the vicinity or inside we seem to have an entrance here. Okay. Saving again. Let us be cautious.
There's no telling what kind of characters or creatures you might find here. An imp. Very interesting. Luckily, our elven katana is of high enough quality to slay imps. But if we were ever desperate to switch to a different weapon, we do have the ebony dagger still. We might already be done. Oh my. This place is not so pleasant, is it? Excuse me. Are you perhaps Bethka? Goodness, you gave me quite a start, young Redguard. Have I really been down here for so long? How time does fly. Well, if you would be so kind as to escort me back to the temple, my good Nazi. Absolutely. What do you guys think of this uh, interesting design choice of having a, a little head pop up on the left when you're uh, escorting someone? I think it's suitable, you know. It's a simple way of handling this idea that you're escorting someone without having some potential annoyances from having them actually exist in the game, such as them blocking the way or being killed by enemies kind of sidesteps those types of issues. Now do we dare explore a little bit more? We better save first. Werewolves. Oh no. <laughs> That's not good. Not good at all. Oops. <laughs> oh, where are they? What is that? Gold, a book, small statue, and a bell. Not good. That and that. Oh, why not take everything? And this stuff as well. And then get out of here. There wasn't anything else back here, was there? It doesn't look like it. Let's go ahead and put some items in our wagon. Oops. Statue. We might check out that book later. Potion recipe. Well, yeah, these lighter things we don't need to worry about.
going to attempt to explore this area just a bit more, collect a few more items before escorting her back to safety at the temple. Okay. Either perhaps, or they're part of some unsavory cult, perhaps. Let's go ahead and light a torch. Leather cuirass, ectoplasm, black rose, steel claymore, leather helm, and so on. Okay. some new stuff back in the wagon. And I know I said I wouldn't worry too much about the lighter stuff, but I suppose we might as well put some of that in there as well. It does add up over time. future I probably won't bother collecting all this lower level armor, but for now it might be good for me to do a bit more of that, as we could really use a lot more gold. Let's try to rest up again, up some here. Beautiful. I'm also curious to hear your thoughts on the overall design of this game. I think it's an extremely fun dungeon crawler, an extremely fun RPG all around. It has great role-playing elements, great elements of realism in the world, and its various factions, various locations. Just an infinite, well, you know, <laughs> within quotation marks, infinite variety of uh, quests that you can uh, engage in. And to me, there's enough variety that it feels as though there's always an infinite amount of stuff remaining for you to do. And if you do start to feel like you've experienced so much of the game's default quests and so forth that it's starting to feel a little bit repetitive to you, well, there's always mods to add additional quests, additional world elements, and so forth. Oh yeah? Well, guess what? You're gonna get a shock. That's right. Okay. Steel Kite Shield. So let's see this metal. 
There's plus two to armor, plus three. So let's equip that. Nice. And instead of an iron right pauldron, we now have steel. Beautiful. Not bad at all. And save again. Gross. I'm glad we slew that guy. He seems to have a taste for torture. One of the most awful and disgusting things any human do to a, to a fellow human. Oops. This says dead person. I forget exactly what class they had. I was hoping I could see that, but no big deal. An imp died. Interesting. Oh, hello there. Come this way if you want a proper fight. Nazim the Sword Singer has business with you, sorcerer. Okay, we are almost over encumbered. Time to head back to the wagon again. One of my next orders of business will be buying the Mark and Recall spell, which I believe is a single spell in this game. In Morrowind, it's separated into two spells, but uh, might be one in this one, I can't remember for sure. Okay. Oh, we'll save again here. And do just a bit more loot gathering. <laughs> this poor woman is probably wondering, um, how long is this going to take? Now, actually, Let's put it this way, because this might seem like it's a little bit uh, roleplay breaking, but we can pretend that she has an interest in collecting a few items that remain here herself. And so we have offered, as any good knight would, to do a bit of gathering of items of interest to both her and myself before we go. and. In the process, we're also ridding this place of some of its unsavory inhabitants. That's definitely a good thing. But there may be more people who come here as archaeologists in the future, and they should not face these dire threats. Sorcerer. A monk. Interesting. A 
At this point, we have explored, if not all of this location, almost all of it. So, let's be on our way. Although, I can't recall if there... Oh yeah, there was a werewolf down this way. There was also an interesting platform that we had not yet explored. So let's have another save. Let's see what this brings us. This could be a big mistake. Okay, just ties us to an area where we had already been. Fine. We don't really want to tangle with that werewolf. But, <laughs> our character is very curious to see what else might be down in this hallway. Huh? Just another platform, eh? Okay, this area is new. Is there a den of werewolves here? Hold on. Sorcerer. Rainwater. Skeleton. O sacred bones of a sacred body raised by unholy magic, I ask humbly for your forgiveness for what I am about to do. That is the way of the Ashabah, to plead for forgiveness to the raised bodies or spirits of the dead whom they seek to return to the calmness, the stillness that should come with death. The god of birth and death, Arche, finds them dead to be especially disturbing. There we go. Slain this one. We've been brought within an inch of our lives. We dare rest. Not bad, not bad. Yikes. Interesting. That bell seems to be enchanted. Shoal's blood. Potion of water walking. Cool. Now let's get out of this disgusting place.
I do somewhat wish we could explore further, but that werewolf is not something we can easily defeat at this point. Unless we get lucky. Which is possible, but I think we've spent enough time here already. Blocks of marble lie nearby, and you pass a row of fallen columns. Well, this has been interesting. And as we hear stories from our friend, this archaeologically inclined cleric, we are fascinated by the history of this location. And all the major and minor events that used to take place here. It is unfortunate that now it seems to have been taken over by some kind of... some kind of evil cult, I would say, but uh, we don't know the full details. In any case, let's go ahead and head back to the sacred tree of Arche. Ah, Nazim al and good Bethka, it is good to have you back in the Order of R.K. again. I'd fear the worst, to be honest. And so, our reputation has risen with this uh, faction. I believe last time I accidentally said that I had increased my rank with the Order of the Candle after completing a Nightly Order quest. But uh, I meant to say reputation, because uh, increasing your rank is different than just raising your reputation, of course. Now then, let's go ahead and see if there are any shops here. Excuse me. Well, first we'll save again. And let's go ahead and... Oh, we'll save over this one. Hello, my friend. Any news? Rescuing Bethka increased the order of Arke's estimation of you. Well, that's good to hear. Can you tell me? Okay, the only thing here is a temple. So... Where is the nearest weaponsmith? I think they have one in Atronigora. Very well. Well, I think... We will simply head back to Sentinel, and perhaps try to have a chat with the Queen, now that we have increased our reputation with various factions in the area. A rainy day in Sentinel. But I suppose in these desert climates, this is not so much a gloomy thing as it is something to be celebrated. There we have the Knights of Iron that I was speaking of earlier, the Knights Templar of the Resolution of Zen, the worshippers of Zenithar. We should take a Mage's Guild quest in the near future as well, but we won't do that quite yet. Let's go check out some of these shops down that way. Now there was... No, there aren't any shops up here. Okay. So yes, we'll just go south. And see what we can see down there. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I have to say, overall, I've always been a big fan of the art style and the music, the sound effects, for the most part, in this game. Uh, what kinds of opinions do you have about the original art style, music, and so forth? And how do you feel about these changes introduced by mods like the Dream Mod that make what are ostensibly improvements to the graphics and the music and sound effects? You know, do you prefer sticking with the, uh, the original graphics and music, or do you like to have slightly enhanced vanilla graphics and music? You know, what are your preferences? I'm very curious to hear about that from any of you who are fellow Daggerfall fans, whether you've played way back in the day or have just been introduced to this game recently. Uh, I would love to hear some of your feedback about how you like to play it and to what extent you like to mod it in terms of visuals, music, and so forth, as well as other aspects of the game. Better appointed than many, eh? So this place might be a bit on the pricey side. We're still not typically seeing a lot in the way of higher quality materials, as a general rule. Okay, and are these going to be the same? I always forget. Yes, the same on each side. Looks that way. Adventurer's Arms Maker. Incense and soft music. Okay, so this place will have the highest chance of having higher quality gear, but they will also charge through the nose for it. Hmm. Not too impressed, actually. The Essential Metalsmith. Sturdy shelves. Okay, sound and functional, but a little more than that. So yeah, this place will get decent prices from... Not the absolute lowest, I believe this is second to lowest. Elven Kite Shield. Let's get some arrows. Six gold. That elven kite shield is slightly tempting. Hmm. And again, I think we're not going to see anything different here. Nope. So we might sell our goods here. I don't think we have a way of marking our map. Uh, I wish they had kept that. That's something you could do in the Elder Scrolls 1 arena, but uh, not in this game. So we'll just have to remember. The Essential Metalsmith is another good one to sell to and buy from. Sentinel's Best Spices. The Emperor's Infinobula. Practical, straightforward. Okay. Well, let's see what else we can find. Mordir's Attire, open from 10. Okay. Better appointed than many. What kinds of things do you have here? Books? Ah. Very interesting. And a very interesting name as well, the Emperor's Infinopolis. Finest Smith. 
Okay, so once again, we can get excellent prices here. Let's remember Glitch's Finest Smith and the Essential Metal Smith. Bank of Sentinel. We could take out a bank loan at some point. I'm not going to do that quite yet, though. Queen Sundries. Okay, well, I'll take a glance. Adoric. Very interesting outfit. But no thank you. Dwinin Sir Coat. First class unguents. Or unguents, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Okay, barely functional. Great, let's go ahead and sell. Hello, Chilta. And we don't have anything except what's in our wagon. So, Troll's Blood. Rainwater, Ectoplasm, Black Rose, Green Boots. I don't know whether I'll actually play around with alchemy in this game. I, I may at some point, but that's probably a long ways off. Sixty-seven gold, great, thank you. Adventurer's Weaponry. Ah, high quality gear here. Elven Tonto. Another Elven Katana, but we don't need that. Hmm. Okay. Well, we should check out the odd library. Ah, so this is not a bookstore, but an actual library. Never mind. If I did have a torch still equipped, it's probably already faded out. I don't recall whether original Daggerfall or Daggerfall Unity might give you the courtesy of having lights extinguished when you're fast traveling back to a city, but probably not. Well, this is a very bare looking library so far. Fitchin. Various books. Fantastic. Excuse me, good sir. How can I help you, Nazim? Any news? I try not to spread rumors. Can't think of anything. Okay. So where am I exactly? You are in the Odd Library in the Sentinel. Well, okay. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about it, but uh, that's fine. 
Can you tell me anything interesting about the Order of Arcade? Stendar preserve us, as if I know. Ask someone else. How about, uh... The Order of the Candle? Oh, maybe I know something, but I'm not to talk about it. Very well. R.K. the God. That will be a worthy read, but uh, we'll save that for another time. General Pawn Shop. Practical, straightforward. Hmm. Interesting. How's it going, Movum? Do we have anything that we would be unlikely to sell to anyone else? No, we don't. So, never mind. We will glance at your wares. Actually... It's possible that uh, we may want to sell the Holy Dagger here, but... Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Hmm... We'll also take your Magic Bell, huh? Might be worth it. And a normal bell. Holy dagger. Wow. That is worth a lot. And the statue. Yeah, I hadn't even noticed how much this holy dagger was worth. That is a lot. My goodness. Well. Of course it's possible we might find a better pawn shop at some point, but this one's good enough. Let's go ahead. We'll get a decent price here. Almost 2,000 total. Okay. So at this point, we do have a lot of gold. And... Well, let's see. What about that book? Let's go ahead and have a quick read, shall we? The Old Ways. The Customs and Philosophy of Grave and Faithful Counsel. We who know the Old Ways are well aware of the existence of a spiritual world invisible to the unenlightened. Just as one living in a kingdom, but unaware of the political machinations, may see a new tax or battle preparations as capricious fortune, many observe floods, famines, and madness with helpless incomprehension. This is deplorable. As the great Quilian Darnazan moaned, the power of ignorance can truly shatter Mithril like glass. What, after all, is the origin of these spiritual forces that move the invisible strings of Mundus? Any neophyte of Artaeum, knows that the spirits are our ancestors, and that, while living, they too were bewildered by the spirits of their ancestors, and so on to the original Akurai. The Daedra and gods the common people turn to are no more than the spirits of superior men and women, whose power and passion granted them great influence in the phantom world. Certainly this is our truth and our religion, but how does it help us in our sacred duty to Selefrenze, or provide grave and faithful counsel? Firstly, we can easily grasp the necessity of both bringing good men great power and making powerful men good. We recognize the multiple threats that a strong tyrant represents. He breeds cruelty which feeds the Daedra of Boethia and hatred which feeds the Daedra of Bernima. If he should die performing a particularly malevolent act, he may go to rule in oblivion. Worst of all, he inspires other villains to power and other rulers to villainy. Knowing this, we have developed patience in our dealings with such despots. They should be crippled, humiliated, impoverished, imprisoned. Other counselors than we may advocate assassination or warfare, which, aside from its spiritual significance, is expensive, eliatric, and likely to cause at least as much pain to innocence as the brutish dictator was inflicting. No, we are intelligence gatherers, dignified diplomats, not revolutionaries. How, then, are our counselors faithful? We are faithful only to the old ways. It is essential always to remember the spiritual world in watching our world. 
performing the rites of Moavita on the second of Hearthfire, and the Vigild on the first of Second Seed, are essential means of empowering the solitary ghosts and debilitating the unclean spirits. How, then, are we faithful to those we counsel and to the Isle of Artaeum? Perhaps the sage Tahirite said it best, In Mundus, conflict, disparity, is what brings change, and change is most sacred of all the eleven forces. Change is the force without focus or origin, and it is the duty of the disciplined Sijic, enlightened one, to dilute change where it brings greed, gluttony, sloth, ignorance, prejudice, cruelty. Tehirite lists the ill prodigalities, and to encourage change where it brings excellence, beauty, happiness, and enlightenment. As such, the faithful council has but one master, his mind. If the man the Sigic counsels acts wickedly and brings Ognithin, bad change, and will not be counseled, it is the Sigic's duty to counterbalance the Ognithin by any means necessary. A student of the old ways may indeed vassal himself to a lord, but it is a risky relationship. Should the lord refuse wise counsel and order the Sigic, to use Tehirite's outmoded word, to perform an act contrary to the teachings of the old ways, there are few available options. The Sijic may abandon his lord, which will bring shame on him and the Isle of Artaeum, and so may never be allowed home again. The Sijic may also kill himself. Wow. Dark words. Heavy words. But a very interesting document. Now that Nazim has read it and profited from it, we will go ahead and sell the book. And that will net us another 357 gold. Not bad, not bad. This is the first Elder Scrolls game to introduce books. The Elder Scrolls Arena was quite light when it came to lore. There were some interesting things you could hear now and then in dialogue with various NPCs, but uh, most of that was just there for flavor. It wasn't meant to be taken too seriously. Um, well, let's go ahead and sell some of our unneeded armor and weapons here at Good Old Glitches. Excuse me, good sir. Oh, of course. Wag. What am I thinking? Here we go. So I'm curious, what do you guys think about the uh, inclusion of books in RPGs like this? Do you enjoy them? Do you ever stop to read them? For me, it just kind of depends what mood I'm in. But I think in this playthrough, I will go ahead and read many of the books that I come across, or that Nazim decides he has interest in reading as part of my playthrough. So uh, I hope that doesn't bore people too much. You are always free, of course, to skip around in my videos to whatever parts interest you more. Same goes for when I'm going about uh, buying and selling as I am now. <laughs> I recognize this is Probably not a very exciting thing to watch or listen to at this point, but uh, anyone who is in fact still watching and listening, <laughs> I appreciate you. And please do let me know down in the comment section what things you like or dislike most from RPGs that you play. 3,105 gold, not bad. Recall he didn't have much of interest. No. Hmm. Perhaps we will go ahead and sell this steel kite shield as well. One hundred twenty gold. 
because I'm thinking we will go ahead and buy the Elven Kite Shield we saw recently. From one of these other smiths. Okay, it wasn't this one. It was... Perhaps... Keep it. And that's good. So we won't have to pay quite so much. We might be interested in these steel greaves as well. Plus seven, we get plus nine, that's nice. So what can we talk him down to? 667 gold. Well, is that worth it? Mm, not sure it is. So never mind on that. Now let's see. it was. And if so, that would be very good fortune for us. So we'll get even better prices here. Yeah, that's great. Six hundred thirty-two gold. Very well. We'll go with that. I mean, I imagine that won't make a huge difference, but uh, I still like the idea of collecting higher quality materials for my pieces of armor and weaponry as much as possible. At some point in the not too distant future, I hope to have a nice full set of dwarven armor. Now at this point, Let's go ahead and quick save. And okay, we'll quickly check these two shops and then move on. To chat with the queen. Now let's see. Ah yes. Nordir's attire. I believe we had not yet investigated Nordir's attire. We should check that out. Because um, they were closed earlier, but I believe by now they should be open. Okay. So it's a little bit on the upper end. Hello there. Interesting. Choice of clothing doesn't matter too much to Nazim. But uh, the garments he's wearing underneath his armor are rather simple, and uh, he might invest in some nicer clothing at some point, and possibly even a nicer cloak. If he sees one that particularly suits him. Toga. Yeah, that's interesting. 
interesting. Priest robes. <laughs> Plain robes. Well, no thanks. Kajit suit. <laughs> well, that's actually not too bad, the idea of just wearing a, a full suit of black underneath his armor. Might get very hot in the desert though, so I'm not sure that feels realistic. Hmm. Well, I don't know, he's wearing heavy armor anyway. In some ways, I like that idea. Otherwise, we could go with casual pants instead of those shorts. Boots would, of course, replace his armor boots. So that's not generally something he wants to do. Huh. Okay. Exit out of there. Hmm. I am thinking that he kind of likes the simplicity of that guard. Do we have any other options to consider here? So maybe this is all the same. Yes. Long shirt, short shirt. I mean, the short shirts never really show up. Decisions, decisions. See armbands. <laughs> Open tunic. Tunic. Formal tunic. Yeah, I must say at this point, as someone who is essentially a full-time warrior, Nazim does not have much interest in wearing fancy or beautiful looking clothing anymore. He just wants something simple that feels comfortable underneath his armor, protecting his skin. And so, yeah, I really like the idea of this Khajiit suit. So we will sell these other, whoops. Oh, yeah, we, Never mind. that's not how we sell. Um, How do I... Uh, 
Okay. So yes. Check out the muscles on this man. Come on, show some respect. Yeah, I definitely like that. So we'll just go ahead and buy the Khajiit suit. 11 gold pieces. And now if we talk to him, we can sell. Hello, hello, yes, please take these casual pants and this short shirt. Free gold, fine. So there we go. Interesting outfit. Not too shabby. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this look, personally. I might change my mind later, but for now, I think that's good. So, let's head this way. Check out a couple more shops before heading back into the palace for our second chat with the Queen. Superior wares. and straightforward. So nothing too fancy. Ah, there's a different color Kaji suit. Well, no thank you. Hmm. Should we buy a horse at this point? I guess we might as well. It's a little bit faster than the car. It'll save us some time. But then again... Well, could we find a better price than this? 1062. We'll wait until we find a better price on that. A green kajutsu. Let's go ahead and buy a torch and some arrows. Stitching gold, sure. More arrows. Another torch. Another candle.
golden robes are kind of interesting, but no thank you. Back to the palace we go, but this is a lovely garden here, isn't it? My goodness. I love these sunflowers. That's very nice. Double check here. Okay. I believe there are mods that allow you to have more interactions with plants that you see in the world. But for now, I'm not bothering with those. I don't like to install too many mods, partly because in some cases that can increase the risk of bugs. Now, obviously, in other cases, that can mean reducing bugs. Uh, it just depends. But uh, I like to keep it somewhat close to the original experience. Obviously I have greatly changed the uh, visuals with the Dream Mod, but uh, with a few exceptions, I, I do mostly like to stick with the original experience as much as possible, at least until I've played a game very thoroughly. Then I might play around more, get a little more uh, experimental with mods. It's also pretty neat that they have this garden here in the middle of the palace. Presumably some sunlight may come through the glass in the ceiling. Very impressive. Akarithi, how fair is thee? My cousin, Mushur, has appealed to me for aid in a rather distasteful situation. It appears that there is a temple of some variety being consecrated, if that's the proper phrase for these disgusting orcish activities. Well, obviously, we need to crush it while it's budding. I am willing to go as high as 323 gold. Can I count on your help, Nazim? Now in the past, Nazim has found this type of speech directed toward orcs rather distasteful. He doesn't sense quite so much of actual um, hatred or outright, well, outright racism or any other form of hatred from Queen Akarithi as compared to the King of Daggerfall. And also, he does have a strong interest in gaining Queen Akarithi's favor. So he is feeling inclined to accept this quest. Thank you in advance for this, Nazim. What I think would be the best use of your abilities is to infiltrate Kroth's guard and eliminate the so-called shaman of the temple. If we can kill it before our assault in 41 days, that would make our job much easier. When the deed is done, report to my cousin's palace in Isfijir. He's the one who's going to pay you for all this. Okay, well, because they're planning to attack anyway, and Nazim is confident that Queen Akarithi is a good enough person that she wouldn't do this without some decent reasons behind it, you know, let's hope that's the case. <laughs> that might be a little bit naive, but uh, for now he has a good impression of Queen Akarithi, so he's trusting that, uh, again, that this is not an act uh, inspired by uh, simple racism, uh, xenophobia, or other forms of hatred toward the orcs, but is in fact because that group has posed a threat in some way. Uh, you know, there are a lot of unsavory groups in this world. And anyway, so yes, he's willing to uh, play a small role in this assault. A small but pivotal role by taking out that shaman. But we will go ahead and save that for next time. 
So for now, thank you very much for watching, and please do like this video, subscribe to see more of the interesting adventures of uh, Nazim al Ashaba and his interactions with this uh, wonderful queen, and uh, all the other interesting folk of this fantastic game, The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. If you are interested in supporting my creative efforts, which involves much more than just making these videos, I am also in the midst of uh, working hard on developing my first major game as uh, the founder and game developer at Golden Drake Studios. So if you would like to support my various creative efforts, please go to patreon.com slash the Drake, and uh, I would very much appreciate that. Uh, regardless of any of these details, uh, like I said, thank you for watching, and be healthy, do good, take good care of yourself. I'll see you next time.